the ultimate form of revenge for me is success. I'm going to keep being successful and make you look like shit. Yeah. That's what it is if you've done me if you've done me wrong. Yeah. I don't give a fuck. I've walked away from millions of dollars, Kevin, you know. Mm-hmm. It's, it's if it's not right, I'm not with it. Yeah. I don't give a fuck how much money you're offering. Yeah. Me, you know? I'm not about to leave with a wet ass. You okay. know what I mean? I'm not doing that. Fuck that. Okay. You keep your money. I'm taking everything with me, which is the talent. Okay. So I have absolutely no problem with betting on myself, you know? And I'm going to win. I always call myself a fucking professional winner. Last year, I was faced with a houseplant challenge. I was tending to my houseplants. I sensed something was swarming. They were by my ears. I'd seen one here and one there. They were practically everywhere. One of the biggest nuisance we can experience as plant parents are fungus gnats in and around our plants. We sometimes come to the point of desperation where we feel like tossing out the plants altogether and starting all over again. But don't do it. Trust me, there's hope. I went through it and came out on the other side practically unscathed. I'm here to walk you through how to prevent fungus gnats and show you how easy it can be to eliminate them from our environment. Stick around to the end and the last tip will help keep you fungus gnat free if you use it. Now this story makes sense for us to start by understanding fungus gnats and how they live so we can better understand how and why we're treating for them the way we do. The cycle of a fungus gnat is simple. They go from egg to larva to pupa to adult. The ones you see flying around are the adults. And although they're a nuisance, they don't actually cause damage to our plants or even bite people. But it's rather the larva, which when present in large numbers, can damage roots and stunt plant growth, especially seedlings and young plants. As fungus gnats develop through their four stages, our challenge begins when an adult female fungus gnat lays eggs in the perfect environment, which is moist soil at 75 degrees Fahrenheit. Once the eggs are laid, they'll take about three days to hatch, at which point they go into the larva stage, in which they'll remain at for about 10 days. And during this time, they feed on everything in the soil from dead roots to organic matter to your plant's feeder roots, and then develop into a pupa. About four days later, an adult will emerge and live for about a week. And during that time, each female will lay about 200 eggs. So you can see how difficult it can be to control this vicious cycle if you don't have a plan in place, or should I say the right plan in place. One way to determine if what you're seeing flying around are indeed fungus gnats is by setting up a few of these yellow sticky traps in your plants. They can also help get rid of a few, but they won't be your main line of defense to try and reduce the population. You can usually find these cards at your local garden center where I get mine online and set them throughout my house plants like this. The fungus gnats are attracted to the yellow color and when they land on the card, they get stuck to it and it makes it easier for us to identify them. Now, before I share with you what works for me to control them, I want to share with you a couple things you can do to prevent them in the first place. And we start by inspecting our plants prior to purchasing them. This is a great practice to prevent pests in general from entering into your home. As far as looking for fungus gnats, the earlier stages of the fungus gnat can be difficult to detect. But to try to find the adults, softly shake the plant and see if anything flies around the plant. This is also a great time to check the roots and leaves, especially the underside of the leaves, which is where the majority of pests like to hide. The next preventative measure you can take, and this is more than likely how I started my infestation last year, and that is to quarantine your plants. Patience pays, and sometimes, unfortunately, I don't have enough. When you get home, if you have other plants, try to find an area within your home to place your new plant that's as far as possible from your other plants. I recommend you quarantine them there for a month. Just in case it does have any pests, you can prevent spreading it to your other plants. It's also a good idea during this time of quarantine to monitor your plant and again, always check the roots and the leaves for pests. I know I sound paranoid, but it's only because I don't want you to have to go through this. Now, the next step you want to take to prevent and break the fungus gnat life cycle is to try to not overwater. Remember, fungus gnats like the soil to be moist, so if it isn't, they won't have anywhere to lay their eggs and an environment to eat and grow. Do your homework and find out specifically what the watering requirements are for the plants you're caring for. A lot of times we tend to overwater our plants, scared that they'll dry out when in fact a lot of plants survive and even thrive with less, not more water. Just remember, the moister our soil is, the higher the chances of root rot, and the better the environment is for fungus gnats to lay their eggs and live off decaying matter and our plant roots. Something that could help you with determining when to water is a moisture meter or a wooden dowel to check the moisture of your plant prior to watering. 
to make sure you're not watering before it's time. That being said, we'll get back to watering your plants in a second as it's a very important part of getting your fungus gnat situation under control. So now we're getting to the good part. Let me share with you the control portion of this solution and what I did and continue to do, which is actually two parts that when used together gives me the best control, not only to knock them down, but to keep them down. Okay, so for the first part of the solution, I needed this product, Mosquito Bits. The granules in Mosquito Bits contain the active ingredient, BTI, which is a bacterium that kills the fungus gnat larva on contact. Being able to eradicate the larva on contact gives us the opportunity to break the life cycle of the fungus gnat. Now to use the mosquito bits, I recommend always reading the label the product we're using and adhering to the instructions given. And as we can see here, it says to add four tablespoons to a gallon of water. I like to recycle when I can, so I used a one gallon water jug. I cut a hole up top so that it'd be easier to work with, and then I filled it with water. Now you can drop the granules in and skim them off, or put them in a tea bag that you can find online. Or what I did, since the tea bags were a bit on the small size, was that I made a makeshift tea bag out of cheesecloth and put the mosquito bits inside. I then placed it in the gallon of water and waited 30 minutes for the active ingredient to disperse throughout the water. And when the time was up, I removed the tea bag and stirred the solution. I then poured the solution into my watering can so I get a little more control over the application. And then I watered all the plants in the room where I observed the fungus gnats. It's important to thoroughly saturate the soil by watering very slowly and until water flows out the drainage holes. Top watering will allow us to apply it directly to the top of the soil, which is where the eggs are, and it's where there's the highest probability of having the highest concentration of larva. So it's a direct hit on our target. I recommend you use this treatment twice with at least two weeks in between each treatment. And then if after the fourth week, we stop seeing fungus gnats, we've completed our treatment. If not, Give your plants one more treatment. The life cycle of a fungus gnat is about 28 days, depending on the temperature. So three treatments should cover you. I was able to get control after the second treatment, but I wasn't done yet. I wanted to make sure they were gone and wouldn't come back. So now that I had broken the fungus gnat's life cycle by going after the larva, I was gonna give them that last knockout punch to prevent them from coming back by doing a better job of managing my water. As I mentioned, fungus gnats like for the soil to be moist, so what better way to remove their perfect environment than by keeping the top layer of soil dry, which is where the adults are going to lay their eggs, and if mosquito bits didn't finish them off, then this would. So after I applied the mosquito bits treatment, or anytime I'm watering and not using the tea solution, I bottom water my plants when I water them. This method of watering allows me to thoroughly saturate the soil, especially the bottom, and not saturate the top. To do this, I simply fill a tray, a bowl, or a catch pot with water, and gently put the plant in the water. I leave it there for about 10 to 15 minutes and then remove it. The time you leave it in the water really depends mostly on the size of the pot, but you can get a better idea of how long to leave them in the water by feeling the top of the soil to see when it's moist. This tells us it's wet throughout. When I remove the plant from the water, I tilt the pot sideways to allow any excess water to drip out. When you have a heavy infestation and are watering in between treatments, try to soak the plant half the time you normally would. This will allow you to keep the top layer of soil even drier. So by getting rid of the larva with mosquito bits and then removing the moist environment that the adults like to lay their eggs in, we remove the fungus gnats once and for all. Once you've gained control over this infestation, it's time to relax and start enjoying your plants again. What better way to do this than to start propagating them? Click this video here to get the top tips that'll help you take your propagation to the next level.